in my opinion, um, geotechnical engineers have never got it better, right, um, in terms of the current infrastructure market. And the influencing factors are firstly, um, we are actually you know, constantly doing a catch up game in terms of providing um, sufficient infrastructure uh, for our growing nation. Uh, as you know, Treasury has recently uh, projected that Australia's population will double uh, in the next uh, 40 years. So by 2050, we're going to be a nation of 35 million people. Right? And this is going to put incredible demands on power, water, um, transportation, schools, hospitals and all sorts of other infrastructure. Um, secondly, um, we are very much underpinned by our mining boom, which is supported, uh, thankfully, by China's uh, continuing hunger for um, steel and other mineral to support their growing economy. Um, thirdly, for as far as geotechnical engineers are concerned, um, I feel that our clients have become more educated right, about the inherent risks associated with uh, groundworks. And as a result of that, they are now looking at different um, delivery mechanisms, different methods such as the Alliance method, um, which is formed to drive innovation um, and share risks with the different proponents. And um, the aim is to derive um, you know, the, value for, the best value for money uh, outcome. So, uh, and that's really great for geotechnical engineers because we are now sit around, you know, with the owner and the other um, team members to drive those sort of outcomes. Um, I think the primary goal for the geotechnical engineer is to assess the ground conditions uh, and their implications on the proposed development and also to um, offer different options to solve the problems. Okay. Well, as you know, I mean, ground um, conditions are very hard to define completely. Um, we can't see below the ground and the conditions are, can be variable. Therefore, to cover all bases, the geotechnical engineer must constantly look for the unknown, in fact, and ask what ifs, um, and therefore potential risks can be identified, um, and contingency measures devised um, that can be put into practice uh, if required. Um, many geotechnical engineers make the mistake of um, either assuming risks for the clients or uh, being too conservative in always providing uh, low risk solutions to the client. Now in my opinion, these are not the right answers. Um, and that's because clients have different drivers for their projects um, and they will have different uh, profiles in terms of time, cost and risk. So I think the main um, role of the geotechnical consultant is to come up with different options and weigh up their pros and cons and be able to explain that to the client uh, in a way that they can actually make informed decisions. In terms of best practice for good project delivery, I think firstly we must have the right um, expertise, the right people for the right job uh, and adequate resources um, to do the task. And that means you know, having not necessarily one person, two people, or uh, we must have the right expertise for the different tasks okay? and having uh, adequate people to complete those tasks. Uh, secondly, good teamwork is a must. Right? Um, I think regardless of the disciplines, all the team members must work towards a common goal um, in a best for project basis rather than having their own agendas um, because the common objective cannot be met if the different disciplines work in uh, you know, silos. The third point is that uh, open and honest communication is a must um, and this is to avoid misunderstandings or conflict of interest etc. 
Um, by, by training, designers uh, often are fixated on meeting design specifications um, and you know, culture of practice, etc. On the other hand, contractors are often biased towards uh, meeting their time program, meeting their budget constraints, etc. And now this creates an interesting tension. Right? And but if you can do it properly uh, by having the team members working together, you can strike a balance between all those conflicting interests, and um, you can you know achieve outstanding results as, as a result of that close interaction. Um, my golden rule is pretty simple, and that is, you know, always sort of work in a consultative manner rather than a confrontational manner. Um, listen carefully to what everyone says, uh, and always contribute ideas, right? no matter uh, whether they're, you know, initially seem incredible. Um, always sort of provide those ideas so that we can talk about them, and then. Uh, solutions will develop uh, and never give up. Sometimes you'll hit brick walls and people put up fences, but that's okay. Um, we can you know, sort of work towards uh, that and break down those roadblocks. Uh, and often, you know, we find that we'll derive you know, solutions. The future of underground planning and infrastructure in Australia is really great. Uh, water, uh, space, materials will always be in demand and we pay premium prices for this. So if we can um, plan underground development in urban environment uh, properly, there's enormous opportunity to exploit you know, uh, sustainable development in our major cities. Uh, urban development uh, poses um, you know, quite a lot of challenge, particularly with respect to the interaction with uh, and the need to protect existing infrastructure. Uh, Australians ha are very clever and we have a lot of innovative people uh, and we have already a um, number of experts in the country who are working on underground uh, projects in Australia and overseas, uh, such as uh, the Singapore Metro, uh, the Dubai Metro, etc. I think what we need in Australia is um, better government planning um, and funding of infrastructure projects, uh, no matter who's in government. I find it very frustrating that um, we have changes of government every three years and plans get scrapped um, and this doesn't do you know, the industry any good. I think government need to have more guts um, so that they can turn our uh, black and white dreams into colour and to reality. For example, I think it would be great um, if we can have you know, good metro systems in every one of our major cities, you know, like uh, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, Paris and London. Um, and these are the things I greatly admire when I visit those cities. I think the, the obvious value is drawing the industry together right, and getting a different perspectives from um, the different um, disciplines, um, be it government, consulting industry, um, designers and constructors, hopefully we will get a variety of um, attendees um, and hopefully they will all contribute in um, the discussion. Um, to improve the future of urban planning, um, in particular with respect to uh, underground uh, construction.